Oi, oi, lads. Hello, hello, hello. I've been playing the Phyrexia all but one streamer pre-release for the last like 24 hours. Well, I played it for like 16 hours, but I, was, I had to sleep in the middle. But I played a lot of decks, I played a lot of games, I played against a lot of decks, I've seen a lot of the cards, and I've prepared a top 10 cards for the set that I think can easily go into decks. There are some other powerful cards that I like where I'm, I'm struggling a bit more to find a home for them. Like, I played the cards in a deck, I thought the card was good, but the deck was bad. So, but that's like, like Jace would be in that list, Nahiri would be in that list, there's a few others. Uh, those might make it into my updated top 10 later in the set but for now they're 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 kind of too hard for me to get into a deck on the first day we'll we'll, we'll come back to those but the, these are my top 10 easy to get into a deck easy like worthwhile crafts you're going to play them in most decks that are these colors so like evolving adaptive is the first card and that's a great example this this card is great it will be on every green creature deck it's kind of like Pelt Collector, it's small differences to Pelt Collector, uh, adaptive grows even due to toughness, so you can grow it by playing like, well, I don't know, the three toughness uh, mana dorks on turn two or something like that, that doesn't apply to Pelt Collector. Pelt Collector gets an advantage over the adaptive, where it gets trample once it becomes a 4-4, four -four, uh, which is nice, but a a a adaptive is still at least similar power level to, to Pelt Collector. It's going to be a staple in all green creature decks. Uh, probably won't see it in like, you know, green kind of mid rangey decks. Like you're not going to play it in, in Junt. You're not going to play it in Bant, these type of decks. But in Mono Green, in Gruel, uh, probably in Green White, you're going to see a lot of Evolving Adaptives. And it is an uncommon, so that's good. Skrelv. Now... I mean, we knew this was good, right? Like, as, as soon as it was previewed, as soon as it was revealed, we knew, we knew it was good. It's a legendary creature, which is good for the Legends deck. It's a white creature, which is good for the white decks. It's one mana, one, one. Protects your creatures, protects your Thalias, protects your Rafines, protects your Fables, protects your whatever, you know? Uh, not too much more to say on this. Everyone, every Magic player can read this card and know that it's good. <laughs> Tyvar's Stunt. <laughs> now, this thing is annoying. I've played against many different green decks. It's like some Simic uh, Rot Priest decks, some like Gruel Beatdown decks, some Mono Green Ramp decks... All the green decks had this in it, and it is annoying every single time, man. I, you can't, I can't kill a creature. My opponent plays a creature, and my, my, my removal spell starts flashing in my hand. It's like, okay, I'll point this at your creature. Nope, doesn't die. Try, I can't kill a goddamn creature, man. I don't want to talk about this card, because I'm still annoyed at losing like 10 games to this fucking card, man. So I'm going to move on, but you can, you should craft it. That's all I'm saying. Now, next up is one of my, let's say, this is a top 10 list. I've, they're kind of in two tiers, I would say. I've got a top three, and then I've got the next seven. Flamestalker is in one of the cards in the top three. Uh, Skrelv is also in the top three, by the way. Skrelv, Flamestalker, and one more. Now, this card is absolutely insane, man. Insane. It is one mana, one two. When you cast a non-creature spell, non-creature, not instant or sorcery, these type of cards are normally, they normally work with instants and sorceries, right? So you're kind of locked into some weird tempo -y, like maybe is it deck, you know, something like that. Just get some considers in your deck, you know, like, like you know the type of deck, right? This is non-creature, so Planeswalkers give you an oil counter. Sagas give you an oil counter. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Whatever else. I'm talking like Fables, uh, like Tyvars, Lilianas, 
uh, and you can probably see where I'm going with this. What are the best non mono color decks in standard right now? Red, black, red, black, X, red, black, blue, red, black, green, red, black, everything, right? This is an insane red, black card. If you think about Rakdos, you've got. I don't know, man. You've got Harvester, four Harvesters, maybe a couple of Shellies, and that's about it, right? That's that's all your creatures. The rest of your deck is Fables, Bank Busters, Removal Spells, and Volks. God knows what else. So this thing is just, you just play it on turn one, and it just chills there. It it just sits there. It's just, it's like um it's like give me gives me midnight clock vibes. It just it just chills. Your opponent doesn't want to kill it, but they have to. They have to. If they don't kill it, then you're you're just gonna win the game. Or like at some point, once your once the flame stoker gets low enough in cost. Another uh, quick point about it is that the the sack is instant speed. <laughs> So about half the time that I activated this ability was I also got to make a block with it. So you get to make a block and then you do your sack, which is even better. Uh, but yes, I cannot state enough how good this card is. It is definitely in my top three cards of the set. Maybe... <sighs> Where in the top three? Hmm... <laughs> Not first. First is coming. <laughs> I'll give it a, a tentative third behind Skrelv, but they're they're both amazing cards. All right, next up is Bring the Ending. This is very similar to Make Disappear, uh, where it's a it's kind of tax counter spell in the late in the early game. And then in the mid and, and late game, you can do a thing to make it better. So in the case of Make Disappear, you can sacrifice one of your creatures and then you can tax it another tax them another two for Bring the End. And if you've got Corrupted, which is three poison counters, if you've got given opponent three poison counters, then it just counters the spell straight up. Which, of course, that's amazing. So I think the main places that you'll see this card are... Uh, in, in like Rot Priest Simic decks, if those turn out to be a thing, and which I think they will in best of one, and they might they might in best of three, but I doubt it. Uh, and in Skrelv's Hive decks, so Skrelv ha Skrelv's Hive is a card that's also in the top ten. Spoiler alert! Uh, it's coming up soon, and we'll show you it soon. It's though it's the enchantment that makes lots lots of little plebs, and you try and get them to three. I tried this in two different decks. It was great in both. Um, it's a counter spell. I mean, there's not much to say about counter spells. We we know what they do. We know how they annoying they are. This is another good one. I I think, I think make this appear. It's kind of accepted that make this appear is the best counter spell in standard. Uh, I think this goes straight in as the second best one. Shieldred's Edict. Again, this is just a removal spell. It was. We thought it was going to be good. Upon playing it, it is good. Um, it's going to take a bit of time to work out how we want to split the removal spells. Like, how if you if you were playing four go for the throats before, now what? How many edicts do we play? How many go for the throats do we play? That will depend on the meta. We'll kind of we'll kind of get round to that. So, I mean, this could this could be anything from a one of to a four of. It depends on the meta. Um, but it, one thing I can say is it's not a zero of Skrell and then our last card here oh no not our last card our last two mana card Skrell's Hive at the beginning of your upkeep you lose one life and create a 1-1 one, one colorless Phyrexian Might Artifact because you're talking Toxic 1 and then this is the how you get the Corrupted for for your Bring the Ending you just make three tokens you attack them you get through and then all, now all your future tokens have lifelink and your counter spells turned on. So I tried this in... 
I tried this in like a mono white mid range deck. I tried it in a blue white mid range deck. And I tried it in a green white kind of aggressive toxic deck. Uh, it was definitely at its best in the slower decks because you can combine this card with uh, Wedding Announcement. So you can get more tokens going. All of your tokens are getting bigger with the Wedding Announcement. You're getting more benefit from the lifelink. This, this type of thing. So it's in, in these like kind of grindy white mid-range decks. Uh, I guess the, the ones that we've got in standard at the moment would be Mardu and Mono White Midrange. Yeah, we don't we don't really have a Bant deck at the moment. Um we don't really have a blue white deck at the moment. But yeah, you know you know the type of deck, right? Uh, any deck that has wedding announcement will like this. It, and I, I think that's the best place for it. Um I, I thought it would be better than it was in the kind of aggressive versions too. Like just the the, the, you know, the, the toxic decks that are trying to get to 10 poison counters uh, via attacking. It just, it wasn't at its best there. It's it's much better in a deck that's trying to just get to 3 poison counters just to turn on the corrupted, uh, either for the hive itself or for, as I said, for the hive and the bring the ending if you've got blue in there. But... It was a good card. I think it will be even better in best of three than it will be in best of one, just because uh, best of one is a little bit more aggressive. Let's see, a lot more aggro decks, maybe more de more decks that are going to punish you for paying the one life at the beginning of the turn, and also you don't have access to your sideboard to kind of slow down your opponent to let you to buy you the time to to get to the life link. Um, but it is very strong, and if the game goes long enough, it is very difficult to beat this in the late game. And it only costs two mana. Nor normally for, like, really overpowering late game threats, you're going to be paying a lot more than two mana. This one only costs two. Okay, and these are the three mana cards that I really liked. Got Anax Sentry. This is similar to Brutal Cathar. But it's a much more defensively statted creature. And it's also got Toxic 1. It can target artifacts too, which came up a lot. You can remove your opponent's uh, Bankbusters, for example, or uh, any other artifacts that cost 3 or less. Bankbusters the most kind of prevalent one. Annex Entry was incredibly good. It's, it's another great card in the kind of Wedding Announcement, Skrelves Hive type of decks. Because obviously when, when your base stat line is 1-4... You're going to benefit a lot from wedding announcement, right? Going from one four to two five is a great buff. And the one thing, the thing I like about Annex Entry over Brutal Cathar, uh, both cards are good, but the thing I like over Annex Entry over Brutal Cathar is that the toughness is so massive. There's there's very little four power creatures that see play in standard. Uh. Of course, there's not zero. There's more than zero. Uh, yeah, Sheoldred's got four power, but blah, who cares? Most of the time that you use a sentry, you're going to use your sentry, you're going to remove one of their creatures with your sentry, and then you also get to block another, uh, the next attack from another with your sentry. That's not something you can do with Brutal Cathar. Uh, now, the downside to the sentry over Brutal Cathar is you don't get the go to night, go back to day, activation thing you're not attacking as well um but sentry sentry is so good it was very close to making it into my top three that's how that's how good it is that's how good i think it is that's how good i think the, the white mid-range decks are now um and i will be absolutely shocked if you don't see a lot of this card another uncommon then we've got glissa Another another one that's kind of obvious, like the first time that you read it, is going to be decent. First Strike Death Touch is that's dominant in combat. It's not. It lines up reasonably well against the other, the other kind of incredible three mana cards in in standard. Like if they play if they play Rafine, you're okay with playing a Glissa, right? You can 
you can block their two drop with your glissa you can swing back uh, you're you're drawing a card you know it's it's I, I would say that's kind of fair if they play fable you can you can play you can play glissa you're going to be able to if they attack with their shaman token to make a treasure you, you can easily block it and kill it if they don't attack you can still attack in they might have to jump if they don't jump you're going to kill their fable like it does against the best cards in standard glissa matches up well and that by itself is enough for it to see play it's also filling a major hole in the colors that it is so golgari green black three mana creatures like what what were your options i mean maybe maybe some trespassers maybe some old rut stains you know like some decent cards but nothing incredible and i think glissa is very very strong so my i didn't get to use it too much i only got the opportunity to play it in one deck and surprisingly to me not many people used it against me so of, of all 10 cards in this list this is the one that i've i've actually seen on the battlefield the least amount of times but when it was on the board it was good every single time and i i was playing a i was playing a deck with gix's command in it with glissa so i was able to kind of return two creatures from my graveyard and i found myself returning glissa over cards like shieldred a lot of the time so i mean if you're doing that one time that you know a creature's going to be good Tyvar Jubilant Baller. Jubilant Brawler, sorry. <laughs> Jubilant Baller. So this this is the last card in the list and my pick for best card in the set. Uh, I mean. Best card in the set? It's maybe the best card... Maybe not the best card in the whole of Standard. But in, in my opinion, it's the only card from one that is in contention for that it is that damn good now why why is it good <laughs> why is it good let me tell you what are think about harvester fable and this turn two harvester turn three Use your Harvester, kill one of their creatures, play Tiver, reanimate Harvester, kill their second creature. Now, it's turn three. Even if they're even if they've got an aggressive start and they've played they've played two creatures, you what is their board? Their board is dead. Their board is nothing. Your board is a planeswalker and importantly, two blood tokens as well. So you're massively ahead and it's already it's already turn three. Now if you play if you go harvester into fable or or like you know bankbuster into fable or any of the other things that this kind of jundy type deck would do it's just inc it's an amazing card <laughs> it's it, it's hard to communicate how powerful it is without showing you in a game i'm not able to show you in a game right now but i can promise you that when the set comes out, it will be the first deck that I play. I played it, I lost one game with the deck, and that was to a turn four reanimated attracts or, or something like something that you know, the not reanimator hand. I mean that you you can lose those games, whatever, who cares? It was an amazing deck. Uh I think it can be even better than what I made it, so I'm excited to work on it. Tyvar, remember it gives haste to your your Kikijiki once it flips over, so you don't have to wait a turn to activate it. You can bring back... Harvester is, is the best creature that you can bring back, but even, I, I was using it to bring back uh, Liberators and Canker Bloom type of cards just to be able to have access to destroy more artifacts and enchantments. You can also use it to... Which is something that I haven't tried yet, but I'm going to is to maybe use it to bring back a flame stoker that we spoke about earlier bring back a flame stoker get your card draw going uh and it just it works well in a deck that gets to use all the other good standard cards so you like think about what your deck's gonna be it's gonna be 
flame stoker, cut down, edict, the braid, harvester, bank buster, uh, maybe teachings of the Karen, which is I know, I know an underappreciated card, but I do think it's incredibly strong. Uh, go for the throat. Bank buster, did I say that? Fable, Lily, Trespasser, Tyvar, Glissa, Shieldred, uh, Unleash the Inferno, Tear Asunder, G Gex's Command, Invoke of Despair. Uh, tell me that doesn't sound good. If you tell me that doesn't sound good, I, will, I don't believe you. I don't believe you. That's... Tyvar is my number one pick for this set. And I need to say it quietly because I don't want to I don't want to jinx it. But for all the Jund fans out there. For the last few sets, you know, we've been close, huh? We've been close. The first couple of weeks we've been trying out our Jund decks and They've been they've been pretty good, but they've never quite stood the test of time till the end of the set. Like it's not it's not been like Grixis, it's not been like Esper, you know. Like it's always kind of fallen off just a little bit. But it might be copium, but I think it might be our time. I don't want to jinx it, but I think it might be Jun's time. I'll see you soon. Ecuador. Do 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 do